look at that. I told you there were some dadgum big ones out deep. Hey guys, one of my favorite ways to catch them all year round, but really, really in the winter is a big spinner bait. One ounce, double willow leaf, and slow roll. When I say slow roll, the water's, I think 45 degrees, I mean slow roll. So we're gonna go through the motion, see if we can get them to bite, and uh, hopefully you learn something. So this is a white swimming dinger. And one thing about putting a trailer on the key is to make sure that your hook is in the center of the body and that it's straight. If not, it's gonna cause your spinnerbait to roll a little bit. And you wanna make sure that it's not bunched up. Like right now, I got too much plastic on. You don't wanna bunch it towards the top. So what I wanna do right there is tear that just a little bit where that's really good and straight. That's gonna keep that spinnerbait from rolling. That's a big profile. That's what you want in the winter time. We're not here to catch a bunch. We're here to catch some big ones. So today I'm throwing a one ounce uh, covert double wheel. And the reason I'm doing that is actually two. One, you know, I can fish down there to that 10, 15, and the water's pretty clear, so I, I don't want the spinnerbait just going super, super slow. Even though the water's 45 degrees, I want it moving. So that's why I lean more towards the one ounce. You know, and the, the willow leaves over the Colorado blades just because the water's pretty clear. You know, if it was a lot dirtier um, or a little bit dirtier, I'd probably go to Colorado blades and maybe even a three quarter ounce just to slow the bait down and really get a good thump above them so they can feel the bait. But this water is clear enough, it's gonna be more of a sight bite than a feel bite. Look, okay, he's barely moving, it's so cold. So I'm a little confused. Not surprised, but confused. I mean, the water temperature is hovering around 45. And that, I mean, that fish is in three foot or less in some old lily pad stems. That's the cool thing about the bait. I mean, that right there, like if I were to fish around this creek with other baits, you know, I'd have to have a square bill on, a deeper crankbait, a jerk bait to be able to cover all of those depths. And with this, I can throw it up there shallow. I can slow roll it out there around some of those trees, which I have not had a bite yet, but I'm gonna catch one out of one. And I can throw it up there shallow and, you know, guys are like, well, why are you throwing a one ounce up there? Uh, it's just so I can move the bait quicker because the water is decently clear. That's what happens whenever you uh, T-bone the trolling motor, have to realign it. And, you know, when you do that, when you're aligning that, you want to make sure everything's straight. If not, it's gonna cause your bait to roll. You don't want your skirt strands, you know, overloaded on one side. You want it even. You want your trailer straight, perfect. And you see how my wire's offset? It needs to be right over the hook. And I like it to be, you know, pretty closed. About like that, it's gonna let it, it's gonna let that bait swim a lot quicker and a lot smoother being uh, adjusted right. You know, there's, you see all of these trees and what you want to look for is things that are different, whether it be the bottom, maybe some of these trees are on a high spot, maybe some are in a ditch. But like this tree that's coming up right here that's broke off and laying down, you know, that's just something that's different and would be a good spot. So if you go to a lake that you've never been to and, uh, you know, you pull up and kind of like this lake, there's, there's really two things that I see that fish can hold on. And that's these trees and grass. And there's just, there is just something about grass that attracts fish a lot. So, you know, if we go to a lake that has a lot of grass, I'm gonna try to figure out a way to catch them because that's the best chance 
probably to win. Uh, you know, lakes like Rayburn and Toledo and Gunnersville that have a lot of grass. I mean, those, those fish love it. And that's where a lot of the tournaments are usually won at because that's where a lot of the fish live. You know, with a spinnerbait, it all depends on the type of grass. You know, there's some grass out there. I don't know the names of all of it, but it, you know, it just, it just wads up on your bait. It's almost impossible to, to keep your blades clean. And you just, I just can't be efficient even though I want to throw it. It's just not an efficient bait. Uh, like the grass that we're fishing today, you know, it looks to me like to be a uh, coontail. It's still healthy, it's still green, so it's not catching on the blades, which is perfect. I can just come across the top of it and, uh, you know, I'll twitch my rod to keep everything clean. But, I mean, I haven't made a single cast yet where my bait's wadded up, which is good. Getting a little bigger. This, that's, look how skinny these fish are. Evaluate each bite. So back there, the edge of the grass right there, the same thing, the edge of that coontail. And they're just not a bite. Um, just load up and you got to swing. You know, we've had a real warm winter so far and these fish just really haven't gotten to feeding. But I'm gonna hope that the two I've caught are males. You know, and, and you know, if you're somebody watching this and you've never slow rolled a spinnerbait, um, I would recommend starting with Colorado blades. You know, pick some water that's a little bit dirtier just because you can feel the blades, the blades turn. It's a lot crisper and it's a, it's a lot easier in the winter time to detect bites. And then once you figure, you know, what a bite feels like, then I'd move up to willow leaf blades kind of get some confidence in knowing what it is. I've taken a lot of people fishing over the years, slower on the spinnerbait, and if there's one thing that they struggle with as a group, it's just detecting the bites. Uh, if it, I mean, especially with willow leaf blades, if it feels different, because um, they're not gonna, when the water's 45, they're not gonna slack line you. They're not gonna take the rod out of the hand. They're just really gonna be there. It's almost like a leaf or a piece of grass on your bait so and like like i said if it's if you're in doubt swing Dang. oh my oh my Look at that. I told you there were some dead gum big ones out deep. Look. Look. Choked it. That's a handful right there. Slow rolling that spinnerbait. May not get a lot of bites every day, but you can catch them like that. That's why I'm hooked on spinnerbait fishing. 7.36, big item. It's fun though. That's right there is what it's all about. Bye girl. She come out of deep water, it's gonna take her a second. There she goes. Earlier, you know, I'd caught six or seven fish up around the bank, pretty shallow, but I hadn't caught any big ones. So, you know, you, you're still looking. I mean, even though you're catching some, you're still looking. You know, and I come across, I just saw a little subtle point on live scope and there was three or four big dots down there, you know, 10, 12 foot deep. And I knew when she bit, she wasn't little. Um, so now, you know, we're kind of working on something a little bit different. I would not have seen those fish. I would not have caught that fish if I hadn't seen it on live scope. Um, you know, I didn't see her bite, I just saw her. I knew she was like nine foot deep. I threw my bait out there, counted it down, and she smoked it. So, um, now we're gonna, you know, run with this a little bit. See if, you know, maybe they're all the big ones or a lot of the big ones are out there deeper. Cause I, you know, I haven't caught any big ones shallow. 
And that's why we're here, is to catch big ones. So this is the setup I'm using today. One ounce covert double willow, uh, chartreuse white and blue with a white pearl uh, swimming dinger on it. Like I said earlier, that swimming dinger, you know, I don't want a lot of plastic. The water's pretty clear. 20 pound Sunline Power to CFC. Has the orange, you know, segments in it where I can visibly see that. Uh, Falcon Eye Crosser, Jason Christie Eye Crosser. You know, this rod is not a super long rod, 611. Um, it's got a lot of backbone. It's actually the same rod I use for frogging, but it's got tip, which I, I can feel those blades are turning. And then a loose hyper mag. This is a 5.4 to 1. You know, when I'm spinnerbait fishing, I want a slow retrieve. I want my hand moving, but I don't want the bait moving very fast. You know, when I first got here, I wanted to catch them on Colorado blades. You know, big Colorado blades, feeling that thump since the water's 45, but it's just too clear. You know, the bait's um, too slow. I'd see fish follow it. So I needed to speed it up. Therefore, I went to the willow leaves and um, ended up working out great. So it's time to catch another one. Hopefully it's big. I think we're on to something now. That's two big ones and three cast. Look how white that fish is. That tells you, ooh, look at that side. She's had a rough day. How white that fish is. That tells you that fish is down there. I mean, this water's pretty clear. She's not getting a lot of sunlight, so she's down there really, really deep. Another thing you'll see, that water's getting cold. Look how red the inside of her mouth is. A lot of that blood's pulled to the outside. That's whenever those fish, they're just cold. Thank you, girl. Like I was reeling it and I was getting pretty close to the boat and I was like, there comes a fish, but you know, it's too close to the boat and just literally right underneath the boat, she got it. Ha! So much fun. The trailer's a very important part of a spinnerbait. You know, today I'm, you know, I was wanting to kind of target that eight to 15. So I don't want a lot of plastic on the bait. I want, you know, this is a real skinny trailer. I want that bait to fall and get down there. If the water was dirtier and I was concentrating on that three to six or seven, I would probably use something, you know, a little bit, a lot more plastic, like a pulse or something like that, where it would float the bait. But in this case with the water clear, I want that bait to get down there. I want it to move. I don't want the trailer to restrict it at all. It's what it is. It's where the deep water, just like I thought they would be, but I thought they'd be in those visible trees. They're just on that lip where the deep water meets the shallow water. This might be a crappie. Oh no. Another good one. So, the minute I set the hook, I thought about something. I mean, that's a good fish. The quality of fish is just way better out here in the middle. I say in the middle, we're not just out randomly throwing. There's, there's actually a lip here where the channel turns. But what happens when you go to these lakes, there's always multiple patterns going on. You know, we got up around the bank. We're still throwing a spinner bait, but there's some fish up around the bank. So even though you go to a lake or, you know, you're at your home lake and you're catching fish and you think, well, you know, this is the deal. There's always, always multiple patterns going on. And uh, it kind of seems like we might have landed on the right one for the day or for the minute. It can change. The longest cast. I don't know if I ever got a hook in him. Come here, girl. Come here, gotcha. 
not bad. Kind of shot our pattern with the good ones only being deep. See how much darker he is with the black lines in the back than the fish that we caught out there deeper. That fish was probably three or four or five foot deep. It just tells you he's up there shallower. He's a shallower fish. See all the colorings and stuff on him. All that color is based on sunlight. The less sunlight they get, the more white they're going to turn. I don't know if that's the same one I missed or not. But we got us one. Up shallow. On a big spinner bait. There we go, guys. Thanks for watching. Until next time, hope you learned something. I'm going to keep on fishing, though.